Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The much-anticipated signing of 27 agreements to unlock 56 billion rand in renewable energy investment was delayed yet again by a last-minute legal intervention. Terence Screamer joins me to talk about the outlook for the projects. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Government decided to hold back on the signing of the project agreements on March 13. Why? Yeah, there was a lot of excitement uh, the week earlier when Minister Jeff Kadebe announced that these projects which were bid in 2014 were procured legally by the DIE in 2015 and then sort of halted in 2016 when Eskom said they're not uh, willing to sign any further PPAs, power purchase agreements with uh, renewable IPPs. Um, it was, uh, there was enthusiasm when he said that these were going to now be signed on Tuesday, March the 13th. But in the a late night bid or legal challenge, uh, NUMSA and Transform RSA uh, took uh, this uh, for these projects to court and said that Eskom should be interdicted from signing. And uh, even though the interdict was not granted by the judge, the decision was made by the government and the DOE not to sign uh, as, as announced and rather wait for the, the matter to be ventilated in the court. Um, and that's going to take place on March 27. And they, they said once that has happened, then there would be an immediate announcement as to another date for the signing. So they don't see this as an insurmountable hurdle. They do acknowledge it's a hurdle, but it's not the end of the road for the projects from their perspective. What is the likely outcome of the case? Yeah, I think, as I said, it's, it's these, proje these projects were procured under the Renewable Energy Framework that has been very successful in South Africa. It's been in place since uh, 2011, and we've procured uh, um, and over 100 of these projects, and we've also seen over 200 billion rands worth of investment. This is the next round. These are lower, lower prices than were bid back in those days. So we're now seeing average uh, tariff prices around 86 cents for mostly the wind and the solar projects, rather than the, the initial prices, which were above the two rand level in some cases. Obviously, there's different technologies, and that's why the attempt by the DOE to unlock it last year with a 77 cents a kilowatt hour cap uh, was never going to fly because we have a framework, uh, that framework uh, uh, has rules to it and that would have been uh, in massive breach of those rules. What the IPP office did in the intervening period was go back to the bidders during the delay period and say, is there any way you can polish up your projects and give us a better deal? And the focus really was on transformation and commitments were eked out both at the ownership level um, of the project, so there will be more black empowerment at that ownership level. And then there was also commitments were made uh, to do a lot more uh, transformation at the, the construction and operation and maintenance of this, that, that level of the project. So I think the, the outlook is that, yes, there will be this court case, but in the long arc of history, I don't think this court case is going to stand in the way of the signing of the, these agreements. And we, we will see these agreements close over the next few months. So maybe not immediately in March, and there is now another delay. But I think we will see by July, August, that these projects are now uh, have reached financial closure, the majority of them. And we'll see uh, the 56 billion rands worth of investment flow. Um, the, the, the issue is what happens beyond this. And I think that's where a big national conversation is probably going to be needed to see uh, what we're going to do about our en energy mix, our supply industry, and how that should be structured. What does this signal about the state of the energy debate in South Africa? Well, I think the state of the energy debate is shifting. I think we've had one that's been dominated by the role of nuclear now for quite a few years. I think with the, uh, the elections of the ANC president in Nasrec in December, Sir Ramaphosa, who subsequently become the president of the country, I think the message is clear that uh, nuclear is no longer front and center. There's an issue around affordability and we have many other options. The other thing that's changed is that we're in a, a power supply side surplus and that surplus looks like it's going to remain for some time. We also have threats to the, the uh, owner of most of the power production in South Africa, Eskom, as well as the single buyer of all RPP power, Eskom. So there's some financial stability issues and structural issues that need to be addressed at Eskom. I think this, uh, this resistance around coal jobs uh, um, is going to play a role in the discussion. 
and I think we have to be very sensitive to the issue of jobs as we transition. But I think stopping the transition is unlikely. I think this is a, a global phenomenon. <coughs> it's one that South Africa is just at the beginning stages of. Others are more advanced. And the big change has been the, the cost of solar photovoltaic and onshore wind for now. Those two technologies have come down dramatically in the cost curve. And therefore, the, the, the um, integration into the mix is almost inevitable because of South, South Africa's, particularly because of South Africa's very good wind and solar resources. So we get, people are going to want the least cost energy production. Solar and wind provide that when the wind is blowing and when the sun is shining. And then we have to see if uh, this integration takes us to a level where it's grid disrupting. We have to look at how do we do that? Should the workhorses of the system be solar and wind? And if so, how are we going to back these up when the sun is not shining and the wind is not blowing? And is it cost effective and is it still the least cost? Now the jury probably is still out in the early days, but in the rest of the world we're seeing that transition take place. So I think the debate has shifted dec decisively and we saw the the new content and tone of that debate very much in evidence at the recent local government conference uh, energy summit. And they've called for a, a, a electricity reform commission and they've called on the president to appoint this commission of experts and stakeholders to look at the reform, look at the structure of Eskom, where does the structure of the electricity supply industry as we move from a more centralized system to a more decentralized system, and then look at the role of Eskom within that. And then We'll, the the knock-on effects onto the different technologies, but yes, jobs is going to play a big role in this debate as we as we move forward. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.